that felt good. That was a nice little click. <laughs> to get tails. In this episode we will be installing our CPUs into the motherboard. Motherboard open. So now when you're dealing with electronics the, sta the standard warnings apply for static electricity I it's not good you have no need for the little charges to go jumping and frying up your whole works the best way to handle that is with a connectivity bracelet around your wrist tied to the uh, something grounding to the board uh, we will not be having that uh, we will have to equalize the static charge between the CPU, my hand, and the board uh, very carefully. sockets that we will be addressing. We'll be addressing that these two nice processors. As I mentioned in an earlier video, these are Sandy Bridge processors from 2014, gently used. Probably in some uh, big infrastructure piece uh, data data center for Facebook and Google most likely we have there is 16 cores 32 when hyper threaded of 2.6 gigahertz processing power uh, not everything can benefit from parallelization but a lot of things can. Yes. First, we'll disengage this lever. The round one comes up nicely. Then this, the other lever. And this lever, as we turn it up, should open the case. Now, making sure to ground ourselves. Start opening the electrostatic devices. Take out the processor. If you hold it by its edges, you do not try to touch this plenum up here. She a piece of art. See these guidance notches here. We'll be lining those up 
with our device. You'll also notice dot, 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 triangle. And if we look down here, see in the metal, dot, dot, triangle. Place this on gently, see if it sits. Then move the latch back over. This will pop up. We then load the two keys. Good bit of pressure. Good bit of pressure. The round should go in second. The, the straight can't go in without it. And now the CPU is fully set. It only wants for its cooler on top. So let's try this with the other one. See, this doesn't come out first at all. You must release this first. And then this one comes up. Number two. Once again, reminding ourselves to get grounded. We're grounded. Bring the processor out. As this is used, it would be very good to benchmark this. That is number two. I'm guided by the beauty of our technology. And then we see the, in the metal stamp, there's a triangle up here. So the triangle is now meshed. Right there. And then she goes. What's nice is you just place it there. This provides the centering that it needs. This and those guidance tabs. And pressure. This first. go. Now that next thing is going to be putting in some grease here. And this grease is the most toxic thing that mankind's yet invented. Uh, it is uh, a thermo conductive grease that will allow these to connect smoothly with the bottom side of these coolers. Which, you might notice, looks like it'll fit right on there. And this fan will blow the cold air across the radiators, which will cool off the plenum. Now this grease is highly toxic, as I mentioned, but that's okay. We don't want to be touching it or the tops of these really much at all. The uh, grease, the only grease that should be there is this stuff right here. And 
what is this? This is a thermally conductive compound resisting changes in consistency at temperatures up to 177 degrees science. 350 degrees Frankenstein. Maintaining a positive heat sink seal, yada, yada, yada. Do not put this in your soup. All right, CPUs installed. Next step, the memory. We have a few sticks to put in. I dislike this type of packaging. It is, let us say, not resistive to static in my opinion. As a matter of fact, I think this generates static more than anything else. Well, the instructions were no help, but I'm going to give it another go and just see if I can slide it in real gentle. Very sensitive. Just make sure to be very sensitive. Oh, that felt good. That was a nice little click. Those are the bad little clicks. This lever starts coming up. I don't know if you heard it, but it just made that little click. Let's keep loading our memory modules then. sticker for the car, I guess. And the memory modules are in place. <clears throat> Three to four millimeters in diameter. It is an infinitesimal spec. Rob from St. Peter. Three to four millimeters in diameter. Check. That is a itty bitty bit of coolant. It does make it nice and smooth, though. Now we screw the rest in. Boy, I'll tell you, that stuff burns when it touches you. And again. Just a dab will do you.
just take the cardboard out now and then fight with the pins. Sounds like intelligent ideas. Very nice. <clears throat> Very nice. And now let me drop our fans back in. Now, do I want this cord on top, the side, this side? Yeah, this side. Let's go with that. Yeah. That fan gets its clip. One and two. Line that up in the Z axis <clears throat> and numero dos. Again, fan should be pointing in the correct direction. And then we <clears throat> lock it in with our pins. Uh, this is nice. So, what else do we want to have fun with here today? Yes. I'm tempted to put on the PCI Express card for the USB 3 because there's really no way that this will screw anything up. I like to get the power on and check to see if it's working. Now, unfortunately, this is a server motherboard. This is a, well, it's a, uh, it's an Asus Rack server workstation. <laughs> so, uh, what we've got here on the back is rudimentary at best. Um, and the screens that I have are no longer in the VGA range, but the HDMI range. So, in order to be able to see anything on the screen, we are going to need to have also installed the graphics card. The thing is, though, that the screen isn't entirely necessary to check if everything's wired up right. Hmm? What's that? We can listen for the beeps. They sound like it's making an error, and it sounds like it's unintelligible. The truth of it is that it's not unintelligible, and it is usually written down somewhere what each one of those beeps means for each motherboard. So, let's go make some beeps. Well, the other machine I was using has given up the ghost, and so it is time to 
put this one together. The impetus is now twofold. Uh, I'd like to actually hang on to this foam, but I'm going to pop this back area off just so the nice new graphics card can fit right there. Let's plug it into a TV. Looking good. Right and one thousand watts available. That's a nice set of card cords. Got some F to it. Nice cable. Feels nice. Three hundred volts. Or AWG 2.08 millimeter squared. That's T 105 degrees centigrade. square and very good with the other components we have black and red we will be using PCIe <laughs> it's a good cluster a now part of the reason I bought this this particular power supply is because I need to have two inputs for power to the processors. That is supplied by this configuration. Eight there. Split eight, 
goes into one plug. That will be what powers the processors. I think the uh, EPS uh, is, uh, pulls in the 12 volts. Should be. First thing is the main power supply to the motherboard. Plugs in so. You'll notice that there's a uh, little clips on the side of these. Uh, if you're wondering, I found when putting these into a motherboard, uh, it is uh, useless to pull back the latch because in the end you want to hear the click. So you'll be releasing the latch anyway. And when you release the latch to hear the click and then you haven't yet done it, well, you'll be pushing down at that point. So not that difficult to put it in anyway. Nice part is these are somewhat idiot proof. Mostly things don't go where they shouldn't go. It's pretty hard for them to do that. That is literally how loud it is. That is amazingly quiet. I think that's all for today. Please comment, share, subscribe. Uh, do comment. Happy hacking.